is nothing like your traditional cherry based fragrance. So let's go ahead and review it now. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel where I upload weekly fragrance content. So you already know the drill. Hit the subscribe button down below and also make sure to follow me over on my Instagram page. So today we are reviewing yet again another cherry based fragrance. I believe cherry has become so popular. It seems like every single house is making their own cherry, whether it's a designer house or a niche house. But so Sparrow's take on this cherry is extremely unique. And so Sparrow was probably one of my favorite niche house discoveries of last year when they of course came out with Vibrato, which took the fragrance community by storm. And of course, the moment I heard about this fragrance, I saw this beautiful red velvet bottle. I just knew I had to get my nose on this. For me, cherry is by no means one of my favorite notes. It's not even like my favorite fruity note. However, I do appreciate a good cherry based fragrance, of course, Probably when you guys think of cherry, you, the first fragrance that comes to your mind is most likely Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, which is kind of the first fragrance that started this entire trend. If you do go into Maraschino thinking it's gonna be similar to Lost Cherry, you've mistaken. I do actually wanna shout out Sospero for sending this one over for review. Of course, that's not gonna change my opinion on the fragrance. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. Let's go over some information now. Maraschino was of course launched in 2024. It literally just came out, I believe, this month at the time of recording, so it's brand new. For the retail price, only only size they come in, which is the 100 ml, is gonna run you $325. The concentration with this one is of course an Eau de Parfum, which means it is pretty highly concentrated, a little bit less than the next straight, but more than something like an Eau de Toilette or an Eau de Cologne. The perfumer is the man himself, Christian Provenzano, who I believe is the in-house perfumer for Sospero and has an absolute huge resume. With all that information out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the packaging and presentation you're gonna get with Maraschino now. All right, take a look at this box. This is kind of like your traditional Suspiro box. If you've seen one, you basically have seen them all besides the coloring difference. Of course, you have the uh, Suspiro butterfly logo all throughout that is texturized as well. Maraschino down here, 100 ml Eau de Parfum. On the top, you also have the butterfly logo. On the back as well, made in Italy. On the bottom, you will have your barcode and batch code to authenticate your product to see when it was produced. And these do have a nice seal that you open up like so and your fragrance is housed in there. So let's look at the bottle now. So take a look at this bottle. Of course, this is gonna stand out on anybody's shelf. Wherever it's placed, it is gonna get like the center of attention because of how bright this beautiful red velvet is. You also have, of course, that gold plaque on the front, Maraschino with the Suspero logo. Suspero engraved in front of the cap. On the bottom, you do have your sticker with your batch code. Nothing on the back. On top, you also have that butterfly and it does lift up and these are like very, very heavy metal. Nothing inside of the cap, nothing on the atomizer, but you also have engraved as well, so Sparrow. And these do hold, hold on by friction very tightly so you can't pick it up as I'm demonstrating. My only gripe with these bottles is the velvet does kind of come off and I know a lot of people kind of complain about that and that's also not my favorite thing. So that is the bottle presentation. In the top you have cherry, almond, peach, strawberry, and apple. In the middle you have heliotrope, orris, jasmine, mimosa and rose and in the base you have vanilla vetiver musk tonka bean sandalwood patchouli and amber and this will be classified as a sweet fruity so let's spray this and test out these atomizers decent atomizer unfortunately it's not pressurized but it does shoot a lot of juice so let's go ahead and remind myself of maraschino now so right away when you spray this fragrance you're immediately going to be greeted with the cherry of course it's the most dominant note within the entire composition and it's not kind of like your regular just normal cherry it's a maraschino cherry hence the name which kind of comes in like a can with this very thick syrup it's a very dark dark cherry that smells kind of sour very very sweet and almost has more so of like a candy texture to it just an extremely distinctive cherry that they use in Maraschino, unlike any other cherry dominant fragrances out there. It's just very, very syrupy. And I did hear Maraschino cherries kind of have like an almondy accord to them, which I definitely am picking up. Of course, you have almonds in the top as well, which kind of go hand in hand with that cherry note. And just smells so authentic. I mean, most cherries kind of come across very synthetic smelling. You can just tell they smell fake. 
This actually smells like I have a can of Maraschino cherries right in front of my nose. It's that authentic. The almonds and the cherries aren't the only two notes that are primarily in the opening. I am also getting a burst of that strawberry note. It is very, very fruity, very, very sweet. I might also be picking up on that peach note as well that just kind of makes a nice fruit bowl. I'm not getting much of the apple, so it's primarily cherry almonds as the two main notes along with the strawberry and then a little bit of that peach. If you love fruity fragrances, this is gonna be right up your alley, no doubt. But seriously, one of the best fruity top notes I've got my nose on in a long time. Now, once we make our way into the middle of Maraschino is where it starts to turn very floral, which kind of brings a nice luxurious elegance to the fragrance itself. And it's primarily coming from the heliotrope. I would say that heliotrope is the main note in the mid over the jasmine, the mimosa, and the rose. Just primarily heliotrope. Now, when it comes to heliotrope, of course, it comes across very floral, very fresh, kind of green as well. But it also has this almondy touch to it, just like the maraschino cherries and that almond note in the top as well. So all three of those notes kind of just make this nice slightly nutty kind of bitterness to the fragrance and i think that's exactly what sospera was going for and they nailed it finally when you make your way into the base is where it starts to become extremely smooth and creamy primarily from the vanilla that tonka bean as well and a little bit of that sandalwood which are all basically three creamy notes that just make for a perfect base of any fragrance and it's seriously well done in here you can tell this fragrance is of high quality, natural ingredients, and it smells like a $300 fragrance. At least when it comes to fruity fragrances, which are hard to nail when it comes to like smelling natural, because like I said earlier, most of them come across very synthetic. It's all in all a very good gourmand that actually comes across edible, even though do not do that, obviously. So just to run it down back to you guys really quick, in the top, you're getting, of course, that authentic maraschino cherries, very syrupy, dark, juicy, a little bit sour, along with some bitter kind of uh, nutty almonds and that strawberry. It starts to transition into the florals with the heliotrope and then a base, you're just left with a smooth, creamy base. So for the best seasons to wear maraschino, I'm going to be walking this one in the spring, fall, and winter primarily. I'm going to stay away from the summer when it's very, very hot out because this could be cloying and it's very thick, especially on skin. I couldn't imagine wearing this one like when it's 80 degrees or above. And for occasion, this is where this one actually shines because most of the time when you think of like cherry, strawberry, peach fragrances, like very fruity fragrances, it usually leans on the casual side, but something about this one, it can of course be worn casually as well, but you can actually dress this one up. It's one of those rare fruity fragrances that can actually be dressed up in my opinion. And I think it's coming from that almond note because it kind of brings a nice formal touch to it that kind of works perfectly along with that fruit basket in the opening especially. So you can dress it down and you can dress it up, which is very versatile. For gender, I believe the entire collection from Sospero is targeted as unisex. Of course, some lean feminine, some lean masculine. Kind of like how Basso leans masculine, vibrato is pretty unisex. This one though, I would say is unisex leaning on the feminine side. And you kind of expect that. Like when you think of a feminine fragrance, the first thing that mostly pops in your head is fruity florals. And that's kind of what this is. Doesn't go too far in that direction where I'm not comfortable wearing it. I actually rock this one and don't think twice about it or hesitate wearing it or anything like that. So if you are a man, you like fruity fragrances, you still could pull it off. But at the end of the day, it is unisex leaning feminine. Because I could see a lot of guys not really liking this one, especially because of the cherries and strawberries. But if you are a guy like myself that just appreciates fragrances, likes all fragrances, all genres, things like that, I think you would still enjoy this one if you are that kind of guy. Just because of the almonds in here as well, kind of make it more unisex. Now for age groups, um, I would say this one is a little bit more youthful rather than mature. Since it doesn't smell like somebody 40s and up, man or woman, like some like classy, fragrance it doesn't give off that vibe it's not really mature it's not extremely uh, sophisticated or anything it is a little bit more on the youthful side i kind of picture maybe somebody in like their early mid or late 20s maybe into like the 30s as well rocking this one the absolute best because it definitely does have this kind of playful fun vibe about it now wrapping the review off talking on the performance of maraschino so I got about eight hours of very solid longevity with this one. So about average performance when it comes to that category, no complaints. It will easily get you through like a whole eight hour work shift. So the performance is there. Now, when it comes to the projection, 
I got about moderate projection. It's not really a room filler per se, but when you're walking around, you're by a bunch of people, maybe in like a circle, they will absolutely smell you and probably ask you what the heck you're wearing. It just isn't the kind of fragrance that's in absolute beast mode where when you walk into a room, you know it's gonna be a room filler. It doesn't really fill up a room like that. However, the sillage is so good. The projection is moderate. You're getting good longevity. You're getting pretty good projection. That all comes down to a fragrance that smells like a natural, fruity, sweet fragrance. Sparrow knocked it out of the park on their take on a cherry, man. I love this one, and I believe every cherry lover out there will as well. So that's going to do it for my review. Of course, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe below if you haven't already, and you already know. I'll see all of you back here in my next upload. Take care, everybody.